Hello everyone, DM Gashbat here, and we are back with our Warcry solo narrative campaign, The Rat Hunters, from the 2021 Tome of Champions. We are on to Scenario 3, the last of the three location-based scenarios in the beginning of the campaign. This one is called the Northern Sewer Entrance, and we'll get to that in a minute, but first let's go through the warbands. First is Haldora's Explorers, a 1,000 point slaves to darkness warband. First we have the leader, a Dark Oath War Queen named Haldora Hell's Daughter. She has a Destiny reroll and a jar of Chamonic Glowflies. Next we have four Chaos Marauders with Flails. I know Warcry uses slightly different names. I'm still going to be referring to them by their old Warhammer Fantasy names. The middle one has one Destiny reroll. The one in the back actually has two. We have a Chaos Knight with an Ensorcelled Hand Weapon and a Healing Potion. Next we have two Chaos Warriors with Hand Weapon and Shield. The one with a Top Knot has a Chronomantic Dial and a Destiny reroll. And finally, we have two Chaos Marauders with Hand Weapon and Shield. Both of them have a Destiny reroll, and the one on the right has a Blast Powder Bomb. For this game, we will be facing 1,100 points of Skaven, so the time has come. They now have more points than we do. Having an extra 150 points to spend, I added a fourth Clan Rat, a fourth Giant Rat, and I upgraded my Claw Leader to a Claw Lord. So in total now, we have four clan rats, four giant rats, one pack master, two gutter runners, a warp fire thrower, a poisoned wind globe deer, and the claw lord. Here's the board setup that I'll be using, representing the sewer access that the Skaven are streaming out of. The mission that we're using for this scenario is assassinate, and it sounds pretty straightforward, but I'm glad I read the card ahead of time. I'm automatically the attacker, and I have four rounds to kill the enemy leader, but it also says that if the enemy leader, the Skaven Claw Lord, ends a battle round within four inches of a table edge, then he dies, I guess, and we automatically win. We also have a couple of things to determine randomly before the game starts. First off, we have to decide on our twist. We're going to roll between two different things. One is Dead of Night. I don't roll that. I actually get Eager for the Fight, which gives all warriors plus one move. I don't think that's bad. While it makes the Skaven really, really fast, I think that extra one inch for my Slaves to Darkness is going to be more valuable. That four inches is kind of limiting, and bumping it up a good 25% to five inches could really help. Less of a help is the deployment card that I drew. I drew Holdout. This one, I have to be honest with you, this one just looks like a badly designed deployment. The red player starts with their hammer group in the exact center of the board. The blue dagger group starts in the middle of the southern long table edge, and the blue shield group starts 8 inches in and 6 inches down from the northwest corner. So I get it, you've got one battle group on the table, surrounded and pretty close to two opponents' battle groups, they just have to hold out until your reinforcements arrive. So they are in a tough position any way you slice it. I think this would be okay if your reinforcements arrived quickly and close to where the action was, but that's not the case. Your red shield group arrives in the bottom of the short table hedge over on the right on round two. Your dagger group doesn't arrive until round three and they can be deployed anywhere along the top table edge, but that's also when the blue hammer group arrives on the top half of the right short table edge. So I just don't get it. It looks to me like you spend the first round of the game getting the hammer group beaten up by the two groups that start on the table. Then the red shield reinforcement arrives, they get beaten up by the remaining two blue groups after they've beaten up your hammer group, and they also get ambushed on their way to the fight by the blue hammer group. Your dagger group shows up at round three when that blue hammer group shows up as well and basically seems like they would just be surveying the damage that's already been caused by the opponent's forces. I'm not sure what the expectation for the red player is here. Are they supposed to make a beeline to where the shield group is going to reinforce? In which case that doesn't really put them ahead. They're going to take damage as they run. So at best you're going to have to reform a hasty battle line with some injured troops. Is there some advantage to being able to have so many of your forces in reserve? Like if there are objectives to claim or places to hold? I don't really see how having the reserves would be better than having the people on the table to move to those positions in the first place. Is the idea that the hammer group that starts in the center will have more efficient attacks because they can just wait for the enemy to arrive to them and so you can use both of their actions to attack rather than to move? That also doesn't make sense, because you are outnumbered 2 to 1, and if the opponent has missile weapons, then just forget it. So I don't exactly understand. 
I think if both the red reinforcements showed up on round two, that would be better. But we're going to run with it as it is. And you never know, the Skaven might get that. And again, that'll put me in a really good position. Well, you've been looking at this table while I've been talking for the last couple of minutes, and so I think you already know. No, of course not. I'm the red player. I start with my hammer group, which, by the way, is my weakest of my three groups consisting of a Chaos Warrior, a Marauder with a Shield, also with the Blast Powder Bomb, and a Marauder with a Flail. So they're facing the two largest of the Skaven battle groups. The shield group, which contains the Claw Lord, my objective, is parked right next to us with three clan rats and the warp fire thrower. And the dagger group, well, they're not going to have any trouble getting to us either because they consist of those movement eight, movement nine now, giant rats, four of them, plus a gutter runner and the pack master. So what do I do here? I can sail my guys straight into that shield group and start dropping attacks into the Claw Lord. He's got a toughness of 4 with 20 wounds, so I'm not going to kill him that first round. He's tough, but he's not the toughest. And of course, I do realize that this is a bad time for me to go and upgrade the leader of the Skaven Warband, right when I have to do an assassinate mission. So I don't think I'm going to kill him. I think all my guys are going to die in return. And every round after this occurs, there is a one-third chance that that Claw Lord just heals 5 points of damage every time he activates. And of course, that dagger pack moves really fast, so they're going to get in there to help real quick, even without that charge special ability that they will get one third of the time. And when my shield group does arrive, they are all movement four, and it's going to take them forever to come in and help. So I could just run away. I could take that group in the center and just make a beeline to where the shield is going to appear and try and hold out there. I don't love that idea either, because I think I'm going to take hits as I leave, just because those Skaven are so fast. And I'm not going to be able to evacuate everyone right away. Some of them are going to get caught by the advancing Skaven and have to use a disengage action, slowing them down. And even if that did work, now I'd be clustered up with my shield group and I'd have to fight through all these Skaven in order to get to that Claw Lord in the middle of the pack and kill him off before round four. And they will immediately get reinforced right there by the hammer group on round three. So what do I do? I have a plan. I apologize for this, but it's the game's own fault for putting me in this position in the first place. Game starts, we roll our ability dice, I get triple fours and three singles. The Skaven player always counts as having three singles and automatically wins any ties to see who goes first, so I'm going to spend my one and only wild die that I got this round, and I'm going to make another single so I can go first. I'm going to activate my Marauder with the Shield and the Blast Powder Bomb. I'm actually looking forward to this. I'm going to move him off to the right, and he's going to lob that bomb right at the Claw Lord's head. So everyone within 3 inches of that target will take d6 wounds on the roll of a 4+. I roll for the Claw Lord, and I miss. Okay, that's alright. I roll for the Warp Fire Thrower, and I miss. That's not great. I roll for the three clan rats, and I miss three more times. I make five d6 rolls and get a one, two, or three each and every time. What a miserable set of dice. That's okay. This actually wasn't a key component of my plan. I really just wanted to do this and move that marauder off to draw away some of those lead clan rats. Skaven turn, and while the rules are pretty vague about who I can activate first for the other player, I have always said that it's the closest model that activates first. So in this case, it'll be that clan rat, which is closest to that shield marauder that I just activated. I roll for his behavior, and I get charge, which is the worst one. So he gets a bonus move right into that shield marauder, and he does a d3 points of damage automatically and rolls the maximum three. So there's a real disbalance in the dice rolling straight away in this game. He then gets his first attack action. He's got three dice. He gets one hit and one crit, so another four points of damage. And then with his second attack action, he just immediately kills my marauder. So yeah, I hate to say I told you so, but this hammer group is dead. They are not going to hold out against these Skaven. So while I'm disappointed that the Blast Powder Bomb didn't do anything, and I'm disappointed that that Marauder died so quickly, didn't draw any more of those clan rats away, we are going to proceed with the plan. And for that, I'm going to activate my Chaos Warrior next, and he is just going to make two move actions. He's going to slip past the shield group and go hang out at the edge of the board. 
that's going to mean the next closest Skaven model is going to be that clan rat right up there. I'm sorry I didn't take a picture of this, but he's just going to get a standard two actions and he's going to make a regular move into my Chaos Warrior and he's going to make a regular attack, which thankfully he completely misses. The thing that absolutely could not have happened for this plan to work would be that clan rat coming in there and killing the Chaos Warrior. That would have been pretty unlikely. He would have had to have gotten a charge result and a lot of crits, but it was possible and I'm glad it didn't happen. My turn again, my third and final activation. I take that Flail Marauder and I double move him away from there. I just get as far away as I can from either of those Skaven groups. And here we can see the plan come together. It's the Claw Lord's turn. He is the next closest to one of my guys. He gets a standard two actions. He moves into contact with that Chaos Warrior, gets his standard attack. He does get a hit and a crit, doing seven points of damage. Pretty good. But I think you can see what just occurred. I moved my Chaos Warrior there on purpose to draw the Claw Lord to the edge of the board. He's going to be within four inches of the edge of the board at the end of this turn, which means that the defender is going to automatically lose. I've basically just lured him into an ambush. My dagger group is going to jump out and shank him in the alleyway. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I manipulated the AI of the scenario to cheese my way into an easy victory. It's possible that I could have done this from the very beginning, no matter what the deployment was. Ironically, before I went and played this scenario, I did think to myself, you know, I could just, instead of giving a Claw Lord, who's pretty resilient, I could put in a Warplock Engineer or a Gracier or something like that, who is a lot more squishy and easier to put wounds on. The thing is, if I had done that, then he would have had a ranged attack and not have charged in to get instantly killed by these victory conditions. Completely inadvertent, but there you go. I tried to make it hard on myself, and I ended up giving myself a path to victory. And do I feel bad about the way I won this game? No, I do not. I did not like this deployment setup. I do not like this holdout. To say nothing of playing down 100 points and having to deal with the absolutely brutal behavior chart that I have to deal with. Unless I'm missing something about the way Warcry is played, I would hate to draw this deployment in a game against a regular person. I feel one of the players is going to feel real bad, and possibly both of them. So yeah, I found a sneaky way to win, but I really did want the reward for winning the scenario. And they are Skaven. They should have seen this coming. So the only thing really to do now is to go through the rest of the Skaven activations to see if they can pull down any of my guys before the game ends. Because I really don't want to take any more casualty rolls if I can avoid it, especially on that Chaos Warrior. The next clan rat from that shield group activates next. He gets a charge, which isn't great, but he only does one point of damage when he moves into the Chaos Warrior. And then he spends his two attack actions completely missing, which is fantastic. The Warp Fire Thrower goes next. He goes and recuperates, which is just fine. He does get that one attack action. He rolls his four dice and manages to get one crit, which does four points of damage, but my Chaos Warrior is still holding in there. That's it for the shield group, so it looks like the Chaos Warrior is going to survive. We're going over to the dagger group, which means that the giant rat is going to try and chase down my flail marauder, and he gets the charge result. So, bonus move, and he rockets 9 inches towards my guy, makes a further move, and then gets an attack action against him. Fortunately, he fails to hit with any of his attacks. The flail guy is doing okay. Rat's nipping at his heels. The next giant rat just gets a recuperate, so he just gets one move action and ends up in the center of the board. The next giant rat gets two normal actions and so ends up with his buddy chasing down my flail marauder. Final giant rat is actually closer to the Chaos Warrior. Really don't want him to get a charge and get those final points of damage in on him, but thankfully he just gets recuperate and so he ends up in the center of the table over on the right. The Packmaster is up next, and he gets a charge, but the good news is that he is slower than the Giant Rats, so even with those three actions, including the one bonus move, he has to spend all three on moves to keep up with his pack of Giant Rats and chase that Flail Marauder. And finally, we have the Gutter Runner, who unhelpfully also gets the charge behavior, so he gets a bonus move towards my Flail Marauder. He spends one more move action, and now he can attack because he has those throwing stars... But now it's the Skaven's turn to have their dice go ice cold, and he does no damage at all either. So it's the end of battle round one. The Claw Lord has been lured too close to the table edge, and my dagger group comes in and knifes him to death in the dark. Was this a glorious victory? 
Heck yes, it was a glorious victory. Haldora Hellsdaughter didn't even show up on the board, but her plan outscaven the Skaven, so I do not feel bad about this at all. Haldora's explorers are moving on to the final battle in the campaign, Ambush in the Dark, and there's no cheat code for this next one. In the post-game sequence, the Chaos Warrior manages to survive without any injuries, which is great. I get two rolls on the Lesser Artifacts table. I get nothing but dust again, which is disappointing. But I also get a vial of Jabberslithe blood, which adds one to your crit damage for an entire game. That goes to the Chaos Warrior who bravely acted as bait this game. He also gets a level of destiny, which I think sounds appropriate. The reward for winning this scenario is that in the final battle, I get two wild dice each round instead of one, which is real, real good. I do like how these beginning scenarios are set up with the rewards. The other two scenarios give you bonuses which you can use in later games, so it's helpful to get those rewards early and use them in the later scenarios, but it also means when you get to this one, which I think is the most important reward, you're fighting a larger Skaven horde, so the likelihood of failing this game is a lot higher. Anyway, that's the game. Thanks for watching the final game. I want to paint some stuff for that one, so it might not be for a while. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, observations, or concerns, and I will see you on the next one.